Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Sluggers View for your CAD RC preparation. Today uh, we'll be continuing with the RC that we had taken up in the part one of the session. Uh, the RC was asked in the first lot of your CAD exam in the year 2019. I've titled the RC as Topophilia Bond Between People and Place, uh, 507 words, uh, five questions. In part one, we had already discussed the passage. That I'll explain the passage to you in quite some detail. And uh, this is the part where we'll be taking up the questions. Okay, so let's start. Okay, now for those of you who are watching, who might be watching the, uh, one of these videos for the first time, I'll briefly explain to you the structure uh, of these sessions of this course. Okay, so now guys, every single session caters to one RC, one reading comprehension, and uh, is in turn split into two parts. The first part of the session is where I explain to you the passage of the RC in detail. And the second part of the session is where I take you through the questions of the RC. Okay. And uh, yeah, so and 40 such sessions, 40 such sessions make up a course. 40 of these sessions make up a course which is titled as uh, an anthology of RCs, which is directed towards your reading comprehension preparation for the CAT. All right. The current video that you're watching is the second part of this session, which caters to this particular RC. All right. So let's move on to the questions then. Okay. So let's come to the first question. Uh, it says, uh, in the last paragraph, the author uses the example of residents of upscale residential developments to illustrate the it's supposed to complete the sentence. So residents of upscale residential developments, the point of reference is right here where the author says that uh, residents of upscale residential developments have disclosed how important it is to maintain their community's distinct identity, often by casting themselves in a superior social position and by reinforcing class and racial differences. Right, that's your point of reference here. The schematic for the same that we used in uh, the FIC explainer is this for this idea, right? Let's look at the options now. The first option says to illustrate the manner in which environments are designed to minimize the social exclusion. Uh, no, in fact, it's just the opposite, right? Because uh, if you notice here, he says that that they, that they that they want to reinforce the class and the racial differences. So it, reinforcing say racial differences cannot be equated with minimizing in fact it's just the opposite right so you can easily eliminate this as a uh, as an instance of factual error so i'll write a here option a is a factual error okay coming to the next option introduction of nationalist projects by such elites to produce a sense of dread or topophobia okay now the idea of nationalist projects is something that has been mentioned here in fact See, if you see here, uh, it says uh, patriotism literally meaning the love of uh, one's terra patria or homeland has long been cultivated by, but it has been, it has been, it is being used by the governing elites, okay, and not by your residents of upscale residential developments. Governing elites, governing elites example is different from the example of the residents of upscale developments, okay. So, so this is a case of distortion here. Right, nationalistic projects are being used behind the facade of topophilia by governing elites uh, to uh, for a range of uh, for, for 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 projects such as war preparation, ethnic cleansing, etc. Okay, this point of reference, residents of upscale residential, does not relate to that part. It's basically a second negative. So the the option has confused the second negative aspect with the first negative aspect here. So this is a case of distortion here, clear distortion, you, uh, and you can eliminate this with a capital E. I'll, I'll, I'll write, note this as an error of distortion here. Coming to the next option. Social exclusivism practiced by such residents in order to enforce a sense of racial or class superiority. Yes, that's exactly what's being done, right? See, if you read the point of reference, they are, they, they are, they are, uh, yeah, practicing social exclusion, right? But the, how it says that uh, how important it is to maintain their community's distinct identity, often by casting themselves in a superior social position, and by reinforcing class and racial different uh, differences, uh, class and racial differences, right? So, so they are act, in fact practicing social exclusion. Uh, these residents, in order to enforce a sense of racial or class superiority, that's exactly it's, it's been it's just been paraphrased. That's it. The point is the same. So. This is something that can be selected with a capital S, a strong selection. Coming to next option, uh, sensitive response to race and class problems in upscale residential developments. Guys, sensitive response would mean that uh, we're talking about a response which takes care of 
the sensitivities of the other people who might uh, be otherwise excluded, right? No, these residents are not being sensitive at all. In fact, they are being insensitive, right? Uh, by, by, by ensuring that, uh, they, by, that they are cast, that they cast themselves in a superior social position, they are being, in fact, being insensitive towards these, the, towards the people of the other strata. So, so it's not a sensitive response. It's, it's in fact just the opposite. So again, you can eliminate this uh, as a factual error. Even option D is a factual error. Okay. So that's your first question. Let's move on to the next one. Coming to question number two, uh, which one of the following comes closest in meaning to the author's understanding of topophilia? Okay. So we are supposed to go through the options and select the one that is closest in meaning to the author's understanding of topophilia. All right. Okay. So let's look at the options one by one. The first option says scientists have found that most creatures, including humans, are either born with or cultivate a strong sense of topography. Okay, so guys, the author has mainly talked about topophilia throughout most of the passage. He hasn't said anything about topography. Topography is basically the study of uh, physic of the physical features of a land or a place. His concern, the author's concern, hasn't been about the physical features of a land directly. His, his concern has been about the bond that people develop, positive or negative. In case of topophilia, it's positive. In case of topophobia, it's negative <coughs> with, with respect to a particular place, right? So this is definitely uh, something not the author's understanding of topophilia. Topography has nothing to do with it. So you can eliminate this with a capital D. Coming to the next option, <coughs> says the tendency of many cultures to represent their land as motherland or fatherland may be seen as an expression of their topophilia. Yes, this is in fact something that the author has talked about at this point of reference when he goes on to throw some light on the darker as affiliations between people and places, basically some darker instances of topophilia. And the first darker instance of topophilia is where he talks about patriotism. And he says that like patriotism is the first dark instance where, uh, uh, where people, where the governing elites use it uh, to for, for a range of their nationalistic projects. So he has mentioned that Yes, patriotism, that is the love of uh, representing one's land as motherland and fatherland uh, has been referred to by the author as an, as, a, as an instance of topophilia. Negative, but yes, it is an instance of topophilia. So yes, this can be an answer. Uh, I'll mark it as a uh, smallest. I'm marking, marking it as a smallest because, uh, well, we might come across an option which might even better capture the author's understanding of topophilia. So that's why weak selection. Uh, and let's move on to the next option now. <coughs> Nomadic societies are known to have the least affinity for the lands through which they traverse because they tend to be topophobic. Okay. So, all right, see guys, uh, the author has, when it comes to, the author has talked about topophilia and he has talked about Topophobia towards the very end, towards the very end, right? Topophobia, just one second, let's use this. Uh, he's talked about topophobia as well. Topophilia is the positive aspect of this feeling, right? And topophobia is the negative, which is, which is when people associate negative feelings or feelings of fear uh, with a particular place. He hasn't said anything about zero when it is neither positive or nor uh, negative. And, and, and this option says that nomadic societies are new, known to have the least affinity. Least affinity basically means, doesn't mean negative affinity. Least affinity means basically no affinity at all, zero, okay? And, 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 and the author doesn't associate having no affinity with topophobia, okay? He associates, suppose the option, uh, ha, uh, instead of least affinity, we had, we had words such as that they are afraid of or they are fearful of the lands through which they travel. In that case, it still could have made sense and could have been related to the author's understanding of topophilia. Uh, and, and even in that case, it would, you know, we're talking about topophobia here and this one is talking about topophilia. So even in that case, it will not make a direct connection, but at least it could have come near. But especially when it is, when it, when it talks, when it doesn't say, use words like afraid or fearful, so that because in case of phobia, it has to be a negative feeling. It cannot just be uh, something neutral, right? Uh, least affinity, having least affinity is almost like 
minimum positive value or almost being neutral. So that is not, the author doesn't relate that with topophobia. Topophobia is related with a negative feeling of fear or uh, fear, right? Uh, or being afraid, right? So, so, and hence this does not come close to the author's understanding of topophilia. Okay, so you can eliminate this as well. Coming to option D. Uh, the French are not overly patriotic, but they will refuse to use English as far as possible even when they know it well. Okay, so they are not overly patriotic. So, see, you don't even need to go into the discussion of being overly patriotic or not being overly patriotic. The passage, any, the, the passage, uh, because the passage says nothing about, has nothing to do with language, right? Uh, and and th th this option seems to be focusing more on the language here, okay? The passage is more concerned with association of people with places and not language. Okay, so, so this will definitely go out of the purview of the passage and hence can be eliminated very easily. So your correct answer in this case will be option B. Okay, so with that we're done with the second question. Let's move on to the next. Okay, coming to question number three. Uh, which one of the following best captures the meaning of the statement topophilia is difficult to design for and impossible to quantify? The point of reference for this is here, where the author says topic topophilia is difficult to design for and impossible to quantify, and its most articulate interpreters have been self-reflective philosophers such as Henry David Thoreau and so on and so forth. He goes on. So, uh, in the light of this point of reference, let's uh, assess each and every option. The first option says uh, the deep anomie of a modern urbanization led to new urbanism's intricate sense of place. Okay, so. On, on the face of it, it seems like this option relates to the discussion that the author has had here, right? Where he says that new urbanism seeks to counter the perceived placelessness of modern suburbs and decline of central cities through new traditional motifs. Because the terms are quite similar. But if you, on closer observation, you'd notice that, first of all, that there's a word anomaly, anomaly right? Anomaly basically means uh, a lack of standards or lack of ethics that's what anomaly means means uh, and, and so if you, if you observe this option closely what we realize is it talks about how the lack of standards or ethics of modern urbanization has led to a new has led to new urbanism's intricate sense of place now the author nowhere has said anything about urbanism's intricate sense of place Neither has he said anything about the lack of standards so far as modern urbanization is concerned. And nor has he said anything about how one of how the first one, how the first one might lead, how modern, how the this lack of standards of modern urbanization might lead to the urbanism's intricate sense of place. So, so every aspect of this option is is not does not match with what the author has said at all in the in the in the at the point of reference the only reason why learners may have fallen for this is just because uh they may have confused they, they, just because they probably figured that okay this part of the passage represents something complex okay and option a is also well also option a also represents something complex right they, they, they both seem to be talking about something that we are not able to understand and then they just they might just have equated both of these and then this is this is the something that that learners often go for like, like if they are not able to understand a certain part of the passage okay if they're not able to understand a certain part of the passage and, and they just happen to come across an option which in some way which just has just seems to have some common terms here they invariably assume that okay something complex here is equal to something complex here no guys please uh, please understand that that's that's definitely not a way to mark uh, to select an option okay because something complex is not always equal to something complex this might be something else and this might be something else okay so anyhow no 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 part of this option relates to anything that has been said in uh, at the point of reference in the passage or anywhere else in the passage so you can eliminate this very easily uh, coming to option b uh, option b says uh, architects have to objectively quantify spaces and hence cannot be topophilic. Okay. Yes, that's that's actually a fair point. Architects have to 
like uh, the it, it it can be inferred from the passage point of reference here that this, they they have to objectively quantify spaces, uh, and hence cannot be topophilic. But the problem with this option is that it is incomplete. It doesn't say why topophilia is difficult. It indirectly implies that topophilia is subjective in nature, and hence because architects have to objectively quantify spaces, it is difficult to, to it is difficult to design. Uh, for topophilia, right? So the part where the part where uh, which needs to have been mentioned here is that topophilia is there is subjectivity involved in case of topophilia, right? And this is the part that the option skips. It doesn't mention this part, and and, and that's the reason why it it it, it we, can, we can render this option is essentially incomplete. Okay, so so just saying that architects have to objective objectively quantify spaces and hence cannot be topophilic requires the reader to guess at uh, to guess the idea that okay so that means that topophilia must have been subjective no so we are not looking for an option that requires you to guess we are looking for an option that gives you the reason or that basically gives you captures the meaning that why is topophilia difficult to design for okay so you, you eliminate this option also quite easily with capital d option c this is an interesting one it says philosopher architects are uniquely suited to develop topophilic design okay the author has talked about philosophers and the author has talked about architects but the author has nowhere talked about philosopher architects just because both the words happen to be part of the passage you cannot just join them and uh, assume that that will be still be relevant to what the author says the reason why the author has mentioned the given the mention of uh, use the mention of philosophers such as henry david thoreau and tuan himself who was a geographer i guess uh, <clears throat> is is to show that how to to, to demonstrate the subjectivity and the complexity of the phenomena of topophilia right if you see this that its most articulate interpreters have been self reflective philosophers such as this and this right so uh, invoking uh, a evoking a marvelously intricate means complex a complex sense of place that means topophilia is so complex to interpret uh, and it's it's so subjective that it generally uh, that it uh, the, it has only generally been uh articulated by interpreted by philosophers as articulate as henry david thoreau and tuan right so the 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 mention of philosophers bottom line is the mention of philosophers here has been to demonstrate the subjectivity and complexity of topophilia not what the option not something that the option says the option basically seems to imply that philosopher are like like because a certain because philosophers self reflecting philosophers are better at, at articulating and interpreting the idea of topophilia maybe you should have philosopher architects design uh, uh, design uh, your uh, architecture right so that's something this philosopher architect part is definitely something that is not at all implied in the passage in fact it is it's a gross distortion so you eliminate as well, this option as well coming to option last option option d people's responses to their com to their environment are usually subjective and can so cannot be rendered in design yes that's exactly what the author has said so so the least that this option has done is it has covered at least the subjective part here okay so so then the, the other options do, haven't done uh, have in fact been in some cases contrary and in some cases they have just missed the missed the subjective part like for example in option b so so this this option does capture the fact that yes people's responses to the environment are usually subjective and that's the reason why topophilia is difficult to design for right so so that that's quite apt and then hence can be your answer okay your correct answer will be option d and let's move on to the next question okay so let's uh, start with question 4 the stem says that word topophobia in the passage is used well the point of reference is here uh and just as a beloved landscape is suddenly revealed so to many landscapes of fear cast a dark shadow over a place right so dark landscape of fear cast a dark shadow over a place so topophobia phobia has been used to demonstrate the sense of dread or anxiety that a person might feel towards a place okay so let's just note that and then let's start let, let's look at the options now uh the first option says uh to represent 
a feeling of dread towards particular spaces and places. Yes, that seems to be on point. That's what the point of reference mentions, clearly mentions. So yes, this can be an answer. Okay. Uh, coming to the next option, uh, to signify the fear of studying complex, the complex discipline of topography. Again, like, like this, this, this option of almost borders on being funny because topo topography as a, as a topic has not been mentioned anywhere in the passage. Topography, again, as, I, uh, as we had uh, noted earlier, is the study of the physical features of a land or, or some place, which is not something the author has talked about anywhere in the past. So you can eliminate, eliminate this with a capital E. Coming to the next uh, option, to signify to, to signify feelings of fear or anxiety towards topophilic people. No, the, 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 the fear and anxiety is the shadow of landscapes of fear cast a dark shadow over a place, not over people who are topophilic. Right, so it's, it clearly says that the, the, the anxiety and the fear is directed towards a place, not to people. So this is again a typical error of distortion. You, you can eliminate it with a capital E. Coming to the next option, uh, as a metaphor expressing the failure of the homeland to accommodate non-citizens. Uh, failure of homeland, not talked about. Accommodation of non-citizens. Again, not, 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 not talked about anywhere in the passage. What might have happened in some cases, in, in case of some learners, is that they may have assumed these non-citizens non to be people who are outside of these residential developments, uh, who are looked down upon by the residents of these uh, residential developments. So, so no, you cannot make the assumption that they are non-citizens. Okay, So this can also be very easily eliminated uh, from the choices. And your correct answer will thus be option a. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Okay, coming to the last question, the stem says which of the following statements if true, could be seen as not contradicting the arguments in the passage. Because again, this is a question stem which can, if you're not careful, have you confused, right? So in such cases, it is always advisable, as I always say, to note down, to simplify this first, okay? So what you're looking for is, you're looking for the option which, if true, will not contradict the arguments. That means there'll be three options that will contradict contradict the arguments in the passage that will go against that will essentially weaken okay let me let me write this down not here but let's take it up let me write this down here there will be three options which will weaken the argument or contradict the argument and which will not be your answer and there will be one option which will not contradict so either that option will be neutral or it will strengthen your argument and that is what will be your answer okay so with this simplification, now let's move on and assess the options. The first one says, new urbanism succeeded in those designs where architects collaborated with their clients. See guys, according to the author, according to the author, as he, as he, the author notes here that uh, topophilia is difficult to design for and impossible to quantify. That means according to the author, it is, it is, it is not possible to, 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 to design for Topophilia for 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 and an essentially for new urbanism to succeed. Uh, so the new urbanism has been try, has been inspired by topophilia to replace these places etc etc with a new traditional design motive. So basically deploy topophilia right. Basically trying to design for topophilia. So the option says that new urbanism has succeeded in doing that. According to the author, it cannot succeed in doing that right. And, and despite irrespective of whether they collaborate or whether they don't collaborate. The author hasn't said anywhere, hasn't mentioned anywhere that, okay, if you do collaborate, only then you can succeed in designing for topophilia, otherwise you cannot. No, the author has in fact made a point that has made a categorical point that topophilia is difficult to design for and impossible to quantify. That means new urbanism cannot succeed. That's what the, that's the point the author has very clearly made. This makes, this is contradictory to the author, right? So, and hence this cannot be your answer because this will be one of the three options that is contradictory and has to be eliminated. Thus, so option A eliminated, option B. Generally speaking, in a given culture, the ties of the people to their environment vary little in significance or intensity. 
again incorrect uh, again totally contrary to what what the author has said in the first part of the passage he says that his 1974 book set forth a wide ranging exploration of how the emotive ties with the material environment vary greatly it doesn't say very remotely or very uh, very little it he says vary greatly right from person to person uh, especially in terms of intensity also in and in, in terms of intensity subtlety and mode of expression the option however says that they vary little so this is definitely contradictory right so this is also contradictory contradictory to the passage so this this can this can also this can also be eliminated very easily coming to the next option which says the most important even fundamental response to our environment is our tactile and olfactory response now tactile and olfactory responses have been noted as the third response to the environment right it says that the third response to the environment depends on the human senses but maybe tactile and olfactory namely relied in the feel of feel and smell of air water and the earth fair enough so it has been noted as a response in the passage but has it been noted as the most important or even fundamental response no this is something that contradicts in fact the most fundamental the more important the more fundamental response is the second one which the author has noted here where where he says that uh, he notes uh, that this is quite the opposite of a second topophilic bond uh, right uh, when a place is home uh, and where has become locus of memories etc 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 it frequently evokes a deeper sense set of attachments than those predicated purely on the visual so at least the second bond is stronger than the first one he the author has said nothing about how strong or weak the third bond is so so this this these uh, modifier that that this bond is the most important or even fundamental are definitely misleading okay there is definitely not at least not support right so this can also be eliminated this this might contradict because this is providing information that the author has not mentioned the author has nowhere said that the, that this is the response is the most fundamental or most important okay so you eliminate this as well we are coming to question uh, the last option which says patriotism usually seen as a positive feeling is presented by the author as a darker form of topophilia so that's actually correct uh, the point of reference being uh, here the author has said that topophilia generally connotes a positive relationship but it is often used to explore the darker affiliations and what are these darker affiliations patriotism literally meaning the blah 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 so he has given patriotism as one of the examples of uh, a darker or a negative instance of topophilia so yes patriotism which is usually seen as a positive feeling is presented by the author as a darker form of topophilia so it, it will not contradict or you can say it will actually strengthen so this can be your answer okay to the question so your question option d will be the correct answer here all right so done with the questions let's move on to the next section okay guys so let's start with the vocabulary section now the way we intend to go about this is uh, on the left side you can see the passage has been provided with certain words and expressions that have been highlighted here and uh, on the right side you have we have the list the same words and expressions have been listed with their respective meanings primarily contextual meanings okay and uh, the way you are expected to go about this is uh, pause the video and uh, go through every expression or word in the context uh, in its context basically as part of the sentence where it where it appears and uh, then check then once you have, once you have read the word as part of the sentence uh, where it appears then check the meaning of the word on the right side okay and do the same for repeat the same for every other word that uh, every word that you may have found uh, difficult or challenging to understand i will not be going through the meaning uh, of each and every word uh, in this list because we anyways intend to have courses dedicated to just vocabulary as part of other playlists okay so yeah so that's about this section uh, pause the video and go through do the exercise if you found the words challenging and let's we're going to move on to the next one now all right guys so let's start with the analysis uh, and reading section of the video so uh, starting with the analysis rc analysis first the genre for this rc is here now uh, for those of you who might have faced difficulty in in the in the topic of the rc with respect to the topic of the rc the ideas discussed or maybe <clears throat> even the terminology of the rc you would definitely benefit from reading more content from the same genre uh, the readability of uh, the rc or not the rc the passage okay the read, uh, readability is just of the passage 
uh, right? So it's ba it basically uh, shows you how difficult or easy the passage was to comprehend. It has been scored out of 10. It is based on a variant of Fleshkin CAD grade level scale that is the most ubiquitously used uh, readability uh, scale across various types of text. So it is quite reliable. Uh, so it is based on the variant of this. So from this you can gauge the how readable or easy or difficult to comprehend the passage was. Next, uh, the length of the passage uh, is also provided here. Uh, I would suggest that you better you, you you the parameter that you should use for for understanding or uh, for for checking the length of passage should not be just the number of words, but rather number of words that you are required to read for answering for every question that you need to answer, right? So uh, and which is which for CAT RCs is usually around 100 question 100 words per question plus minus 15 to 20 percent sometimes. So you can come you can take this as a benchmark and compare how lengthy or not so lengthy this passage was and accordingly incorporate steps in your strategy to to address if you faced issues in terms of because of the passage length uh, coming to the last uh, part of the analysis ideal time to solve the rc is the total time is listed here time required to you that you should have taken up while reading the passage should be should have been should have been less than this and for question should have been less than this and this is the overall total right so yeah so that's the idle time uh, finally suggested readings for this uh, based on this rc based on this genre and based on this rc uh, a couple of articles have been picked up which uh, the title and the author and the platform where they are available uh, have been provided here and the links to these articles are provided in the description of the uh, this youtube video okay so you can uh, check out those articles and read those go through those to get some more exposure uh, in this genre and in this topic okay so that completes the reading and analysis part of this section of this session okay guys so with this uh, we have completed the uh, first passage of the second genre that is culture and social sciences uh, if you have not watched the passages of the first genre you can do so uh, you can go to the play playlist of this course and uh, Go and watch all of them and solve and all watch all of them and then uh we next will be taking up the second rc of the genre okay and so on and so forth will be going through eight genres five rcs in every genre okay guys so with this we have come to the conclusion of the session now uh, for those of you who have not watched the first part of this particular rc this particular session you can click here on this card and it will take you on this video and it will take you to the first part where you can go through the passage explainer to understand the passage in detail uh, and uh, for those of you who have who want to watch the intro video of the course you can click on this card here it will take you to the intro video of the course and for those uh, and others like that. and definitely if you like the session do share it with others who might find it helpful and useful and uh, definitely do subscribe to the channel Stuggers Blue for your CAD VRZ preparation all right I'll see you in the next video thank you